a talk um, on the topic of research we carried out at the University of Edinburgh uh, to investigate if hybrid teaching had changed how students and staff use learn and as you said Hervé if you caught um, my colleague Paul Smith's talk just earlier on what I'm going to talk about will uh, complement uh, what Paul covered in his talk. So just to give an outline of what I'll be talking about today, I'll start with some very brief uh, background about the Learn Foundation projects at the uh, university. The research that we did was part of this project, so it's just important just to set the scene a little bit. Um, so I'll talk briefly about the aims of Learn Foundations and the activities that supported hybrid teaching and learning. And then I'll move on to talk uh, about the user experience research that we completed in the midst of the hybrid uh, teaching and learning environment, the aims and the questions we had and the research methods we adopted to address these. And then, of course, I'm going to share some of the findings that came out of our research and uh, share with you the picture this built for us in terms of how uh, students and staff were interacting with LEARN um, in this new hybrid context and how this was, was different from before pre-COVID. So just on to a bit about Learn Foundations, briefly, um, as Paul has already covered a lot of this, um, it's a project with the overarching aim to make Learn better for both staff and students, essentially providing both staff and students with the best possible user experience of Learn. And to do this, the project takes a service design approach, um, which recognises that to run Learn as a good and a sustainably good service, there's a need to embrace and apply both the perspectives of those operating the service as well as those using it so staff and students and within this approach learn and the activities and processes and workflows that support it are all improved and developed based on evidence gathered in this research and so it follows that this user experience research that I'm going to talk about with staff and students is really crucial in underpinning the, the success of learn foundations and the success of learn really and just to put that in context, I just want to cover some of the strands and activities of the Learn Foundation projects uh, to support hybrid, just to recap really on what Paul was saying. Hybrid at Edinburgh involved, um, I'm aware it's meant different things for different people and have been different, uh, called different things. Uh, for us at Edinburgh, it involves some staff being off campus and some on campus um, and the same for students. So we had students and staff in different time zones around the world. And this slide just gives an overview of some of the activities and the work uh, from the, the Learn Foundation project uh, to support the move uh, to hybrid. And it was the impact of these activities um, which we looked into in the research with staff and students I'm going to talk about. But before I get into the research, um, I just wanted to run a quick poll, um, if that's okay, Hervey, if you could activate that for me, please. Uh, I'm just interested in research, user research with staff and students that you might do at your organisations and institutions. So the question simply is, do you do research with staff and students at your organisation? And and by research, you mean user, user centred research? User research, yeah, UA. yes, user centred, yes. User, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so the poll is open, yes or no? I hope everyone can see it. If you can't see it, you've got a little icon um, next to your hands up uh, to um, to um, fill it in. Oh, I can't see anyone. Wrote. Okay, okay, hold on. I'm gonna I'm gonna send it. Um, do it again. That's maybe because because we are uh, too many trying to do the poll at the same time. I'm doing uh, I'm doing it again. Come on, come on. Um, oh, my poll is not appearing. I'm going to let my colleagues do it because I think we are all trying to do it at the same time. Oh, okay. So that's the problem when too many moderators are spoiling um, the broth, you know, too many cooks. Um, People are so commenting in the chat anyway, so we're <laughs> finding new ways around this technical glitch. It's, it's all good. Lots of yes is coming in. This is This is really good. It sounds like I'm going to be talking to people who who support this work. <laughs> Sorry about that, uh, Mum. Not a problem. Seven new chat messages received and there's lots and lots and lots of yeses. Okay. Marvellous. Well, I will close that off and uh, move on to get on and talk about our research. Um, so yes, as I said, this was the latest round of research in the Learn Foundations project. And this research essentially aimed to build a picture of how staff and students were using Learn during hybrid. And this was partly also to 
assess the validity of the project's previous work. Uh, the project's been going since 2018, so we wanted to, to assess validity of some of the activities and strands um, and to answer questions about what had changed uh, for staff and students. And so to do our research, um, our user-centered uh, research, we use four main methods um, illustrated on this slide. And these have really been mainstays um, of the Learn Foundations project, um, tried and tested in providing us with the kind of data we needed. Um, and since we'd used them before, using them to research the situation in hybrid um, meant we could easily compare data from current research to, to um, previous research gathered uh, pre-COVID um, to help us really pinpoint the changes. And I'll talk through each of these briefly. And of course, they were all carried out through the medium of laptops, hence my, um, my illustrations there. Uh, so a top task survey is just a simple questionnaire. Um, it asks people to pick their five priority tasks from a list of all possible tasks they could complete within a site or service. So in our case, there were around 50 tasks in this list, all things that they could achieve within LEARN. And we sent this survey out to staff and students. Um, 330 students uh, completed it and 131 staff. The card sort technique uh, on the bottom left of this slide um, is basically a, a technique to find out how people expect to find things arranged. So we sent this to students um, to ask them how they expected to find content arranged in LEARN. Essentially, they're given the same list of 50 tasks, things they can do within LEARN, and we asked them to group these into uh, categories that make sense to them. And this was completed by 205 students. So those were the quantitative methods we used. Um, and essentially, the usability testing of the semi-structured interviews were our qualitative methods to triangulate this research, to really make sense of the numbers um, and to understand what exactly it was like hybrid teaching and learning in terms of the practicalities, what things worked and what things didn't work. So the usability testing gave staff and students um, a series of these tasks uh, to complete and we asked them to, to complete them for us and tell us what they were thinking. And the semi-structured interviews were really about understanding the kind of scenarios students and staff were working in um, to gather that uh, rich picture. So what did we find? Well, first up, having a look at the top task survey data, we have the pre-hybrid data and we compared this with the top task survey that we did during hybrid. And essentially for students, we found that their priorities had pretty much stayed the same. So these two graphs lift the top eight tasks that student voted for um, pre-hybrid and during hybrid. And this next slide just highlights that seven out of the eight tasks were the same. And just to expand on this a little bit, um, and, and to give you the, the sort of picture that we got from the other pieces of research we did. So we saw from the top task survey that lecture recordings was the top task for students. And as Paul mentioned earlier on um, with the Edinburgh teaching model, one of the aspects of that uh, related to delivering recorded lectures and staff had been encouraged to prepare lectures in 10 to 15 minute chunks to make them easier uh, for students to digest. And when we spoke to students about this, the interviews gave us a bit more detail. They told us, the students told us that they liked lectures being delivered like this, and they did find shorter lectures easier to deal with. But this also rested on those parts of a lecture fitting together well in some sort of order. They wanted to know what content was in each part. So naming those parts was a small thing, but it was really quite important in helping the student to make, a, make use and understand this content. And because of the shift to hybrid, uh, something else that was interesting was that uh, students were more aware about how these recordings had been created. They were more familiar with platforms. So when we gave them a task in the usability test to find recorded lectures, instead of just looking in the course materials, which they probably naturally would have done pre-hybrid, they were now actually looking to the platforms themselves. So they went straight to collaborate, for example, if they remembered a lecture being delivered through that uh, platform to find the, the recording. Just to talk about the top tasks for staff um, and to see what had happened pre and post hybrid, it was a bit of a different story in terms of staff priorities. Um, so again, the, the top eight tasks here voted for by staff and only five out of the eight tasks stayed the same for, ta for staff, which was an indicator that staff priorities had changed as we would expect um, as they were having to adapt to the new context. And one of the things that we saw was the rise in importance of announcements for staff. Um, 
And again, this was something we, we were able to gather more data on um, in the usability test that we did with staff, uh, because pretty much every task we ask staff to do, whether it was posting details of an online session, um, adding a new piece of course content, putting up details of an assignment, on each of those tasks, they also said that they would use announcements either to signpost a new content, to alert, and crucially to use announcements as a place to gather lots of pieces of information together to tell a kind of dialogue that the student could then access in one place to guide them through different stages. As well as using announcements um, in this extended way, the interviews with staff revealed lots of other innovations they were adopting um, as they adapted to hybrid. And as already mentioned, discussion forums were a big tool. They were widely used in a number of different ways, some of them more successful than others. Um, some staff were using the discussion forums to seed questions, to prepare for a live session and generate a bit of debate. Others were encouraging students to use the forums instead of contact, to post their questions instead of email. Um, and others were encouraging students to use the discussion forums for themselves uh, for, for issues they wanted to discuss. And when it came to group work, um, we found from the interviews that some staff were using Collaborate to set up groups. And this tended to be the case if these groups were going to last for the whole of the semester. Whereas they turned to something like Teams to set up um, more ad hoc groups like tutorials because these would sync easier with um, the calendar. And where there were groups with students in different, uh, sorry, where there were groups with the students in different time zones, staff were having to design activities around that, um, that with parts that could be done at any time. Um, and in some cases, they used integrated platforms like Padlet and PebblePad um, to allow these students to take part. And staff also reported using the whiteboard, um, particularly in Collaborate, as a way to get students to contribute. And what was interesting is that they found that students were, were quite happy to contribute to a whiteboard because it afforded a bit of anonymity. So if students maybe weren't as confident as putting a question into a discussion board or putting their camera on, they might contribute something in a whiteboard um, as part of that activity. And on this point, um, one of the things that came out of both the staff and student interviews challenges around engagement um, in the online field um, on the one hand a student um, illustrated by the quote on the left noted the difficulty with engaging when people were reluctant to turn their cameras on and on the other hand um, illustrated on the quote on the right um, staff noted that trying to get a balance between keeping students engaged and not overwhelming them um, was, was a challenge Moving on uh, to the card sort and what that showed us. So just to recap, the card sort was done by 205 students and this was an exercise where they were asked to sort a list of about 50 items they could do in Learn into groups that made sense of them. And when we compared the results in terms of the groupings that emerged from the recent study to those we did in the study pre-hybrid, you can see here that the same four groups emerged, uh, course materials, course information, help and support and assessments. So students were again telling us they wanted to find things in the same way as before. And the words they were choosing to label the groups that they'd formed were more or less the same. And this was a good indicator that the templates we'd created and the terminology guide and checklist we'd put together previously as part of uh, Learn Foundation's work were still valid. And we were able to add some more detail to this again when we looked at the usability tests with students. Uh, the usability tests with students were all the tasks they were given were all around finding things. Um, and they took multiple attempts to find all of the four types of things that we gave them as illustrated in this chart. And the task that they struggled with the most was one to find guidance on using online tools. Um, and this was quite interesting because if we go back just to look at the card sort results and zoom in on, on one of the items uh, students were asked to, to group or categorize, all of these uh, little items, are the tiny blue boxes represent items and, and this is a similarity matrix indicating how students groups think together. But if we zoom in on the item that's entitled help using technology tools, help using learning technology tools, students said they expected to find that kind of thing in a help and support category. But in the usability tests, um, 
they looked they struggled to, to find this information first of all and they looked almost everywhere apart from help and support for guidance on using online tools so it it turned out this was more something they'd expect to find in a contextual setting so they would find details of a an activity and then they would then want the information about the platform to be there rather than having to navigate somewhere else to find it so what are our conclusions? Uh, did hybrid teaching change how staff and students interacted, interacted with Learn? Well, on the one hand, the research told us no, because students' priorities in Learn stayed the same, they expected to navigate it in the same way. But on the other hand, it told us yes, staff use new tools and existing tools differently. And because there was more recorded content and different types of, of content being generated and being used, there was a different challenge in terms of arranging this um, in a logical way, which, which hadn't been the case pre-hybrid. From the engagement perspective, because there was increased reliance on learn as a place to build community and to build that sense of belonging that you would normally get on a course, um, this aspect of teaching and learning was something that needed to be actively more uh, manage more actively than it had done before we've perhaps taken that for granted before so on balance things did change but it's it's also important to remember that these findings are a snapshot of, of a, a space in time um, and for that reason decisions about how to act on these findings within the learn foundations uh, project are still ongoing and really this will continue um, as long as hybrid teaching continues to, to evolve and change shape and as we move further along this line edging towards uh, post pandemic to see uh, what that brings us and so that's all i have to share with you today so i'm i'm happy to to take questions emma i have been, been consulting the chat but <laughs> hopefully <laughs> Emma, you've been fantastic. Fantastic. Um, um, uh, you covered so much, um, so much ground. Um, uh, one question from Paul: Which software? What software uh, did you use to create uh, the card sort report? Uh, that's uh, optimal. Optimal workshop uh, kind of software that is really hard to avoid paying for. <laughs> not not paying for, if you like. It's. Um, it is quite expensive optimal workshop I'll, I'll type it in the chat actually so you have the name of it um but it is a an excellent piece of so software um we found that you can run a card sort pretty easily if you use uh something like mirror or padlet because the actual sorting you can see but in terms of the analysis of the data um optimal workshop does a lot of the heavy lifting um in terms of that so it is it is worth it Excellent. So much interest. Um, Claire is, uh, no, Essin is asking, are you, are you going to publish an article? Are you going to publish something based on that or a report publicly available? We, we've started to do that. We've uh, published uh, a couple of blog posts. Um, I can look out the link and put it in the chat in a second um, on the quantitative, on the, on the top tasks and on the card sort. We're still analysing uh, the results of the usability tests and the interviews obviously takes a bit longer. But yes, the, the ultimate aim is that we'll, we'll publish all of those on the university uh, blog site so they'll be publicly available. Oh, brilliant. Um, we'll, um, if we can keep up and we'll put it on our community site. Um, I mean, Emma, it's sure. really, really interesting to have you uh, to have you participating to TLC because we've we've done on our side on the Blackboard side run user experience workshop. Um, I think the yep. last one was uh, at Northumbria um, uh, uh, a couple of years ago, and it was really, really interesting to see um, our colleagues here, you know, on the chat joining and talking with our UX uh, designer, and that gives yep. me the yeah, you know the poll that you run was just so interesting to see so many universities having you know content designers like yours but others not having any you know and I was yeah. wondering we have this user group we have a, a, a strong community of, of practice but I think it'd be great um, and I'd, I'd love to to see you know would you join a, one of our user group and have have um, maybe a discussion with other content designers you know as to uh, as to how they work how they do you know your 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 approach your method is really really interesting and also the yeah. conclusion for us are so um, so um, so um, um, relevant so oh, absolutely I'd be delighted to do that yeah 
Oh, that's great. That's really, um, really, really good. Um, just um, um, checking the chat because I realize I've, I've talked too much. Uh, 40 years. I'm um, just reading, the, um, I'm just seeing the latest question for, from Andy Yule um, about the priorities. Yes, there's a, there's only so much I could cover really in the time that I had available. But yes, uh, priorities in terms of what came out of the top tasks tended to be the same across years but you did see subtle differences between schools um, in terms of firstly uh, what was prioritized but also how they expected to find things um, within the card sort um, so yes there, there is more information Andy about that in my uh, posts the, the blog post where I go into a bit more detail about the, the results so I'll uh, let me find the uh, link to that while um well, I remember. Because <laughs> <laughs> well, we I got know what will time. happen, I'll forget, and then I'll. So, no, we uh, we got we got a few minutes, um, Emma. So uh, great, no uh, no panic, um, no panic. Um, no one is going to be expelled from uh, from uh, <laughs> from from the room. Like it does happen sometime. Um, um so thank you our oh, brilliant thank you for the for the uh for the link yeah that's the um the sort of overarching blog post and in there there are links to um more detail about the card sort and about the top tasks and also links to the previous research we did um because as i said this is is kind of part of the reason we were able to draw the conclusions is because we repeated research methods that were kind of already tried and tested um so you'll be able to find all of those through that post. Um, so yeah, thank, thank you. It's great to see all the comments that, that people are interested in this work. Um, yes, I'm gonna reassure uh, Millicent uh, to say that the recording uh, will be available on uh, the, um, the, the conference platform, but also later um, uh, on, um, on our community site. Oh, brilliant! There is a there is a, uh, an announcement here. Excellent. I'm just checking the chat because we still got um, a couple of minutes, which is which is great in terms of uh, conversation. Yes, the uh, the recordings, the the importance of um, of labeling these recordings. I guess as lectures are um, dividing into uh, user friendly chunk their um, yeah. their lecture or their you know their input. Um, they need they need to make sure that there is a, a logical sequence as to these as to these um, as to these, these recordings for for the students uh, to be able to uh, to find their way basically. So uh, yes, that's really I mean, good. Yes, one of the things. Yes, yeah, sorry, just on that one. I remember one of the things that we found was that um, that the staff would label the recordings as they were producing them, and obviously this was there was a lot more work for staff to do in this instance. They were very keen to to get recordings out there and they would perhaps choose a kind of lecture 2.1, 2.2, that kind of thing. But then students sort of said when they then wanted to go back over course materials from week, whatever it was, week two, for example, they then would not remember which chunk of lecture the piece of information that they maybe wanted to check was in. So that's when it became apparent that just maybe sort of having a naming convention or just thinking about labeling uh, pieces of lecture just was a tiny thing but it would just make such a difference um for students uh, when they were trying to find things later on especially given yeah. there was so much more recorded content there so if they had three lectures a week for example that were divided into three chunks each then you know that's a lot of volume of content in addition to the resource list stuff um that students would need to to kind of keep organized in their brain yes i mean it's it's uh, it's you know from the from the perspective of a lecturer everything makes sense because this is you know their subject what they've been doing for for many years and um and as i've been at fault as you know as a lecturer you know to think well you know put yourself in the shoes of a student you know try you know it doesn't make sense you know often you know uh, because of course when it's online it's out of context there's no longer you know this this face-to-face -face, uh, context whereby it's providing so much so much um, help and support that um, you don't see you don't see online emma thank you well uh, thank you so much um You're very welcome thank you for um, having me really really interesting and i'm going to stop the i'm going to stop the recording